Good morning and welcome to A View from the House. I'm Kokeli Tanda. Well, the Minister of Finance has tabled his budget and it's now up to Parliament to closely monitor the way in which the monies allocated to them will be put to good use during this financial year. One of the departments that will enjoy its fair share of scrutiny is the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. And in our program today, we will hear from the Minister, Mr. Richard Baloy, what we can expect from his department this year. We also hear what the leader of the opposition and others had to say about the independence of the judiciary in the National Assembly. And concerns raised about the increasing phenomenon of bullying at schools. Let's go to our first item. The Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs has been a target of violent service delivery protests and plagued by maladministration and corruption at municipal level in many parts of the country. The new minister in charge of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Richard Baloy, says his department is now reprioritizing its objectives for the new financial year. One of his top priorities is to accelerate service delivery and infrastructure development. He says financial management will be jacked up and the fight against corruption will be intensified as we begin the new financial year. In an interview recorded earlier, we asked the minister to explain his new approach to cooperative governance. Firstly, two things. Firstly is that when you spend your money, state funds, you spend state funds on the priorities that you have drawn. So you have a plan. But in the plan, because we don't have all the money that you 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 you, you all need, uh, it has never happened. You always then reprioritize, which means look for the best and the the top priorities. That is exactly what we have to do. It 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 comes at the right time, because when it comes to COCTA in terms of all departments, the, the, the financial year is is starting. We have our APPs. Then the issue is in this annual plans. We have to make sure that if you find that you have got a long list, you have to actually target and then say, this is the minimum that I have to address. The same applies to municipalities that will provide support too. It is their planning cycle for the new financial year that's coming in July. Then the issue is make sure that you target the top priorities. And which are those top priorities? Well, in each municipality, learning from the turnaround strategy it then said firstly what we have to do as you plan you must identify the challenges in your municipality then develop the priorities around those challenges and and that differs from one to another you can't have a one size fit all but in as far as we are concerned as cocktail one top priority is to accelerate a service delivery in this regard infrastructure development is to make sure that the we financial management is checked up we have to make sure that we we fight corruption in 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 our areas so if you accelerate service delivery you you make sure that you target to 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 get yourself up to speed in as far as financial management is concerned you projectize your work identify the things you need to do put them in a project form and then time them so that you want to do them there. So that's exactly what I mean. Talking about financial management, capacity to manage finances and lack of people with technical expertise have and remain a major challenge, especially at local government level. And the finance minister indicated that technical assistance will be provided to struggling municipalities. How is that likely to pan out? This is based on our on our on our plan we then said we want a, to have a situation where we reach a state of clean audit now that goes with assistance technical assistance to municipalities firstly technical assistance start as an in-house issue build it within a municipality when they recruit people you then say this person is a financial manager make sure that that person commands the, the, the competency that is there to deal with it. We established an intervention uh, to make sure that, more especially when it comes to areas around infrastructure development, to make sure that we accelerate the capacitation, the training of the people who actually deal, deal with this issue. So when it comes to providing this technical expertise, like for instance, in terms of the grants that are there, one of the conditional grants 
uh, as part of the budget uh, process is targeted towards financial management improvement. So that is what we then say. We want to make sure that if that grant is targeted towards it, it must be used exactly for that. It must not be diverted and be used for some other things, which sometimes you find it happens to be the issue. Money is being used for other things and not the purpose uh, it is meant for. But, and much has been said about corruption, and you earlier touched on it, uh, especially in the public sector, uh, in the public service. How Do you have any new plans to deal with corruption, to, to, to root out corruption? For, for us, we are saying we have been planning. We have been conceptualizing. The priority now is accelerated implementation. There are and corruption instruments that are there, I mean, at, 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 at treasury level, at public service level, and also our, our law enforcement agencies are there to deal with that. At cocktail level, we then see as we fight corruption, the issue is we have to locate it within the spirit of intergovernmental relations, within the spirit of cooperative government, which means all government departments working together to make sure that we deal with those things. We, we, what we are doing that, as you'll remember maybe, we, we have an inspectorate in, the, in, in COCTA, anti-corruption inspectorate. I mean, when we look at that inspectorate, it looks like it's just another unit. So we, we can't be addressing these things by creating so many units, but the issue is how do we coordinate the, the priority focus for now is to make sure that we coordinate these activities. How do we make uh, the treasury designed instrument of fighting corruption work at the local municipality? How do we see municipalities responsive? How do we see the public service developed uh, and corruption uh, uh, summit? I mean, and corruption unit. How do we get that to operate and work at local? That is our focus. Minister, you recently visited a disaster, a flood disaster area in Mpumalanga. Yes. Let's first quickly have a look at that clip and uh, we'll okay. continue immediately Thank after. you very much. Look here, if the, if the bridge is not working, the people who live on the side uh, the, the river and this side, uh, they don't get their way to go to school, shopping, and uh, these uh, undertakers, they got a problem. Well, last when on the 17th, on the 18th of January, we had the people who have slept here and the, the helicopter from the, and the, the SDF, they come and collect the people this side and that side. So we facing a serious problem about transport. So we can't even get rid of his view. We must just go for more than 60 case from his view. But if we are using this bridge, it's only go for 20 case. So it's a big problem to us. We can't even reach as a view non decade. So it's affecting us a lot. Approximately the communities get affected a lot. Minister, you visited that area uh, yes, recently. And uh, was what, that bridge. <coughs> uh, what was your observations after visiting that area? Well, the observations is, is that, uh, of course, there are serious uh, damages as a result of the heavy rains that fell there. Now, 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 when when you look at that, it's either you have the the, the, the these heavy rains uh, being so strong that, like for instance, in this bridge, because I was there, you find that it does have some culverts and stuff like that. And when the load comes, it clogs the the culverts, and then the sand and the mud comes considered completely block that. And water will always find an alternative route and in the process damage the whole thing. It has to do also with planning. It, it, actually, it also has to do with the design work. The Department of Public Works, when we, we said to analyze the situation, they then indicated their priority in the design. For instance, in some, in some, in some areas, these bridges you find that just as a as, as lab to assist people to, 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 to cross. During heavy rains, such slabs may not actually always sustain a, 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 the load. So it's true that the, 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 the rains, the heavy rains, they cause serious damages. But as were there, very clearly was that the government sector departments, agriculture, transport, uh, public works, housing have been there with relief measures. There were, for instance, in Orinoco, 
where we visited there, you find that a, a, a house has collapsed, collapsed completely. It's just actually hard, hard, the mud hard. And, and then human settlement was already a, a building a house a, as, as a relief measure. But of course, they came in to, to, to install a, a, a temporary accommodation in the form of a tent. And now they are building a house. So it, they, in as far as rescue operations, the rescue operations started the immediately after the, the heavy rains. But long-term repair is something that, that, that the, the, the province has started. And of course, we are coming onto the part even ourselves to assist. You, you earlier said this is as a result of uh, poor planning. Uh, but is it... Uh, Perhaps not also as a result of uh, uh, corrupt tender processes, uh, poor workmanship. No, 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 not necessarily. Actually, we can't we can't give a blanket explanation and say poor planning. You talk about a, a, a bridge, and of course, what we said. That's why, as Cocta, we are on into the picture. We then said we are visiting these areas. Firstly, we need to check the history of each bridge. For instance, if the bridge has been built and it was like sort of a, a, a costed as a say 15 year, 20 year kind of a, a project. Now, when you look at it, you also look at the severity of the of the of the of the disaster itself. Could it withstand it? Is it a quality rated issue? We are doing that professional assessment now. We have not come to a final determination to then say it's because of this thing and stuff like that. Well, the issues of tenders, uh, as, as you're indicating, uh, most of the bridges that were damaged are bridges that some of them were built even before the the, the current dispensation uh, were built by, by, by the previous government. But it's not for finger pointing exactly. The issue, our interest is one, Deal with the question of 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 a, a relief, a provide arrangement that where people have been blocked out, there are arrangements for them to 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 pass, but build a a, a lasting a structure going forward. So that's exactly what we are looking at. That interview with the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Mr. Richard Baloy, was.